Over the past several months, the war had gradually moved deep inside Russian territory. Ukrainian strikes destroy weapons and the Kremlin's logistics, which, when damaged in the rear, stall Russia's operations on the front line. Since late summer, Ukraine has intensified its targeting of ammunition depots, which are vital for keeping Russia's guns and artillery systems firing inside Russia and in Moscow-held Ukrainian territory, according to Newsweek. In July, a law enforcement source told online newspaper The Kyiv Independent that drones had struck a large ammunition depot in the village of Sagivka in Russia's Voronezh region. The depot had stored more than 5,000 tons of ammunition, including Russian artillery and tank rounds, as well as surface-to-air missiles. In early September, Ukraine attacked an ammunition depot near the Voronezh village of Soldatskoy. The strike destroyed munitions supplied by North Korea Andriy Kovalenko, an official with Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council, said at the time. In little over a week, in mid-September, Ukraine said its navy had targeted a Russian ammunition depot in the southern port city of Mariupol, followed by several other reported hits on munitions storage sites. Ukraine then said on September the 21st that it had hit a munitions depot near Tikoretsk, a town in Russia's southwestern Krasnodar region. The Tikoretsk site was one of the three largest ammunition storage bases for Russia and crucial for Moscow's logistics supporting its war effort, the Ukrainian military said. Kyiv estimated that around 2,000 tons of ammunition, including munitions provided by North Korea, were stored at the site. The general staff of Ukraine's armed forces said at the time that its SBU security service had separately attacked a Russian defense ministry ammunition depot close to Oktyabrysk, a village in the Tver region. Fire and detonation are recorded in the area of both military arsenals, the general staff said. Just days earlier, Ukraine targeted another ammunition depot in the Tver region, close to the city of Toropets. The resulting explosion at the site was equivalent to a mild earthquake, the British Defense Ministry said shortly afterward. Recently, Ukraine homed in on an ammunition depot in Russia's border Bryansk region, attacking what Kovalenko described as a storage facility for North Korean supplies in the town of Karachev. In a brief statement, Ukraine's general staff said it had hit an ammunition warehouse at an airfield in Russia's southern Adygea Republic region. Earlier, it said it had struck a depot in the Krasnodar region that was housing Iranian-designed Shahed Kamikaze drones that have long terrorized Ukrainian cities. Several of these sites, the Tikhoretsk, Toropets, and Karachev depots, have belonged to the Russia's main missile and artillery directorate. For an outgunned Ukraine, targeting these facilities has obvious benefits. Ammunition is essential for both sides in what has become a war of attrition lasting more than two and a half years, with no real end in sight. Close to the front lines, ammunition depots are much smaller and more dispersed, said William Freer, a research fellow in national security at the Council on Geostrategy, a UK-based think tank. For Ukraine, targeting larger ammunition depots further from the front line presents better opportunities to destroy greater amounts of Russian ammunition, Freer told Newsweek. North Korea has likely deployed its troops alongside Russian forces in Ukraine. North Koreans may be assisting with the launch of KN-23 missiles, The Guardian reports. 
According to the media outlet, North Korean military engineers are likely assisting Russia in launching ballistic missile strikes against Ukraine. Additionally, some North Koreans operating in the occupied territories of Ukraine have already been killed. One of the Guardian's sources stated that dozens of North Koreans are positioned behind Russian lines in teams that support launcher systems for KN-23 missiles. The first report of North Korean presence in Ukraine surfaced last week. At that time, South Korea indicated that North Korea might send its military to Ukraine in support of Russia. Shortly before that, media reports mentioned that more than 20 soldiers, including six North Korean officers, were killed near Donetsk in a missile strike on October the 3rd. As noted by The Guardian, foreigners have previously fought in Ukraine as mercenaries on Russia's side. However, if North Koreans were present on Ukrainian territory, it would mark the first instance of a foreign government sending troops in military uniform to support Moscow's war. Joining the war on Ukraine gives North Korea a chance to test weapons, gain combat experience for its troops and bolster its standing with a powerful international ally. The Guardian reports. Earlier this summer, leaders Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un signed a comprehensive strategic partnership agreement which included mutual assistance in the event of aggression against either country. At that time, Putin also tried to persuade Kim Jong-un to open diplomatic missions in the occupied cities of Donetsk and Luhansk. The Pentagon expressed concern, stating that North Korean soldiers in Ukraine could become cannon fodder. Recently, some Ukrainian media sources reported that more than 20 occupiers were indeed eliminated in the missile strike near Donetsk on October the 3rd. Among them were North Korean military personnel. Earlier, we wrote about how many troops North Korea might send to Ukraine to aid the Russians. Recall, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine confirmed a successful attack on the 67th arsenal of the Russian Ministry of Defense's main missile and artillery directorate located in Bryansk region. This site stored munitions from North Korea.